Buckle up, we're at it again. It's Lean Coffee Time, where we discuss current topics, challenges, articles, and things that pique our curiosity, and try to have fun while doing so. The topics we brought today are Innovation workshops. Do they work at all? Yay or nay? Are we seeing the beginning of a post-Agile world? Is Agile broken? Is Agile 2 the fix? And Sales and Agile. What's the problem? Exciting topics for a lean coffee, right? As usual, we take turns presenting a topic. I wind up the timer, and when the alarm rings after four minutes, we take a quick vote whether or not to add 90 seconds or proceed with the next topic. I'm ready, are you? Let's go. Hello, and good evening, or good morning, or Happy lunch. I don't know when you're watching this. Welcome back to another episode of Lean Coffee. My name is Jimmy Anlian. Hi, I'm Leila Jungberg. Hi, I'm Anders Iversson. Hello, my name is Jagannat Tamelet. So nice to see all of you and uh, welcome all who's watching this, whenever that is. So yeah, let's get going. Let's start with a check-in question. Uh, Jagge, uh, what are you currently looking forward to? Yes, uh, I am actually rebuilding my kitchen right now for the first time. So I'm looking forward when that's done. Anders, what are you looking forward to? I'm looking forward to it soon being socially acceptable to sing Christmas carols at home. <laughs> well, uh, I'm actually going to an alpaca farm tomorrow. Uh, that's going to be so much fun. It's a dream come true. <laughs> wow. Cool. Uh, I'm going to speak at a conference the day after tomorrow. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm procrastinating the last uh, final preparations. But, uh, and after that, I'm longing to get back to virtual reality and Star Wars Rogue One with kind of starship battles and stuff like that. It's awesome. And no, I'm not sponsored. I wish I were. <laughs> uh, all right. So, welcome everyone. Let's dive into the first topic. So, the first topic I start this time. So, I've thought a lot about innovation. And my statement is uh, innovation workshop doesn't work at all. Yes or no? Do you agree? <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. Um, uh, primer. Yep. So uh, wh what what I have learned, or when I was in this uh, more, uh, I was on a lot of a lot of different um, trainings, uh, seminars, workshops around innovation and how you create innovation and what structural problems that can be there to stop your innovation and uh, the dilemma of innovation in big companies and small companies and so on. And what I realized is many, many of those uh, trend workshops tend to get inspiration from big companies like uh, Apple, uh, Netflix or HBO or whatever, uh, where they are very, very bold and take uh, big leaps and invest a lot and create innovation. And of course, we don't read about everyone else, but that also comes to my conclusion that maybe all of this innovation comes from a group of individuals that either are mad, crazy, or genius, depending on how it's going. And they, they don't need this innovation structure. They just go for it. And that's what's creating innovation. It's more individual-based than process-based. But... <laughs> Sorry, just jumping in. <laughs> <laughs> yes? Okay, so being the behaviorist here in this company, I also think that, okay, if you have one of these crazy geniuses, and if you're fortunate to have this person as a CEO, yes, of course, crazy things happen, and Tesla is born, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But if you think about the bigger picture, and like the amount of people, I think creating a structure, creating an environment for people to be able to let go, to be able to release all of those crazy ideas might generate so much more ideas from so much more people who might not even think that they have innovation within them from the beginning. Yeah. And I do think that you need to like give space for this to happen. 
So yes, do you have a fantastic CEO who is crazy? Yes, crazy shit will happen. But otherwise, you need to create the space. I think. Yeah, I totally agree. And once once in a, once in a while, you get you get this kind of divine intervention in your head with a brilliant crazy idea. But I think it's like writing or any creative process. It, it's work, and you need to allocate time for that. So if you want innovation to happen and creativity, you can't sit around and wait for this the divine mag magic to happen in your brain. Uh, it's it's work. You have to allocate time and explore and do all these boring post-its and. So I, I, I really agree with Jimmy. I, I think it's uh, <laughs> I think the ideation itself is not the hard part. If you put ten random people from a company in a, in a, a workshop, they will have plenty of brilliant ideas for what they could do. I think the hard part is taking these ideas and turning them into reality or allocating budget for them, giving them the space to actually explore them. And that turns into a much more predictable, predictable process of validating ideas and testing things and scaling up and yeah. failing. Exactly. And failing. But uh, is, is it, isn't, isn't that the, 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 exactly what I mean? Isn't that the real problem? And the execution. Yeah, yeah, because some people doesn't need support for that. They just do it anyway. And then in, in, in all companies or ideas comes from someone doing something that seems impossible from the beginning, probably. But, but instead of building this structure, maybe finding the right persons that are a little bit crazy somehow and doesn't take a no for a no and doesn't beat, get beat down, just raise up and keep pushing. Because it's the, it's the same thing when you do organizational change. You get so much, much hit. You just keep pushing because you believe the idea. So, I but think even the craziest person can be beaten down in the wrong environment. Indeed. Then you should move to another. It, it rang. It rang. Uh, uh, continue. Yes, no, yes, no. Yes. Oh, I'm adding 90 seconds. Continue, whoever was talking. <laughs> No, I just said that the craziest person can be beaten down in the wrong environment because I also think that, as I said earlier, if you're a CEO, you have the execution power. You can make things happen. Mm -hmm. But I've been the crazy person in uh, not so very crazy companies. And then you're just seen as this person who should be put on the street. Yeah. <laughs> you're not, you know, the rock star. You're rather the crazy person with all the crazy ideas who nobody can execute. Uh, I don't think it's either or. It's it's yes, brilliant, awesome if you have these crazy people with crazy ideas uh, once in a while. But I also think it's about the culture allowing them or allowing any idea actually actually to be explored, uh, kind of having the freedom and autonomy to go at things and try them out. Yeah. But I think the problem with many workshops, I think innovation workshops, that may might leave a sour taste, is that they're poorly executed. So you have all these brilliant idea ideas. You open up Pandora's box. And people leave the room feeling so excited and then nothing happens. Yeah. Mm. I think that's, a, as I said, a much bigger problem. I also think there's different types of innovation. So there's just like a small portion of innovation that comes from these crazy ideas and spur of the moment thing. And, and it becomes this disruptive idea. I think there's mm. the majority of innovation is much more of a, like a strategic nature of, of seeing like here's a hole in the market and there's still innovation needed to to fill that hole or to come up with the solutions. Uh, mm. But it's a much more structured approach to finding the problems and solutions. Mm -hmm. is, it, is it time up already? It is. It was too fast. Yeah. All right, so. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm I, yes, uh, innovation, I'm gonna be fast. Uh, but maybe my, my idea is that instead of trying to rebuild the whole culture and structure, because that's a big thing, maybe understand who is most successful, would be probably the most successful to drive this idea to, to, to the finish line and the team around it and the person around it. So it's more about not care about that exactly. It should, be, it should not be a smooth ride. Otherwise, it's not innovation. But that, It needs to be tough anyway. A person great at coming up with crazy ideas is probably really, really bad at... Um, executing them yes yeah, for the finish line. that's a that's a different person yes. yeah but, uh, different it, but in your question Jage, isn't it also um the problem of the 
innovation process, the innovation, like there's trending a lot of these kind of different ways to push and drive innovation in organizations, yeah. which usually seems to like being blown out of proportions and not really actually work in reality. Yeah, and uh, this ide ideation, uh, you know, you validate and that's very nice, but I think the ingredients is who is going to run this because mm. it's not for everyone. It's mm. never going to be like that. Someone likes it, someone's very good at it. So who's the entrepreneur to push this through the system or whatever? So uh, I'm missing that one. The, the human side of the crazy people that are going to drive ideas. Yeah. Do we have less time today or? Yeah. No, I, I think we like Time is traveling fast. No, we're on top. <laughs> we're energetic. So topic closed. Uh, thank you, Yagi, for that one. Moving on I to the next one. I can talk more about that. <laughs> we can do that later as an extra side topic, spin-off. Uh, let's, let's hang around. And I'm just saying expertise. this loud to remember now because I can't write anything down because I've used everything to build up my phone. But um, <laughs> what you just said of having one person who is like the idea generator uh, and what you said, Jimmy, about this person maybe not being the person executing it. This is where I think about building like strong teams because I can totally relate of being that person <laughs> who is like, boom, 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 boom. Oh. <laughs> and everybody's like, hold your horses. <laughs> We're shooting uh, the roofs now. We're gonna... <laughs> yeah, but I need someone to sound check me in that. I need somebody who is like, okay, say, Okay, we're gonna do this. How are we gonna do it? Like, think about this. Think it all the way through. Blah blah blah. I think you, it's an interesting question about building teams. Yeah, totally agree. Okay, new try. <laughs> Next topic. <laughs> um, so I brought a topic for our discussion, and I've been thinking that uh, agile really started uh, way back when there was even a struggle to release um, uh, their software monthly. And the, their only way of getting in touch with customers was sit, trying to sit really close to them. So that's what they wrote a, the manifesto around and, and where Agile really started, a big part of it at least. And today with uh, the technology we have and, and really modern software development allows us to release like continuous delivery. We release multiple times per day at least. Uh, we have many ways of getting in touch with customers, uh, both, both uh, quantitative and qualitative. Uh, getting metrics and immediate feedback on their actions uh, and a lot more. So a lot of things that Agile really pushed to get in place feels like it might not be relevant uh, or at least not for cutting edge companies today. So are we seeing the beginning of a post Agile world? And what does that mean for the Agile movement? So I guess the question is, are we seeing a post Agile world? Yes or no? Oh, what? Two yays and two nays. Okay. Who wants to start? I'll start. I, 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 I believe so. I think if you're one of those teams you exemplified Anders, discussing Agile doesn't add anything because it, it's more about, okay, so we have this power to release multiple times a day and we can do it safely and with testing and whatnot. Then the question becomes, uh, what should we build and how do we learn and how do we innovate and how do we pivot and how how do we coordinate with the rest of the team? So topics that aren't addressed or explained or you don't get any help from the Agile Manifesto or Agile Principles. Uh, so I, yeah, I think cutting edge companies that are Agile and team-based and have these things in place, they are, they are facing challenges that the Agile Principles and the Agile Manifesto don't help with. Okay. I, I, I wanted to take this from a, a more holistic perspective, of course. Um, so for me, adding on the perspective of like business agility, I think even looking at like those more cutting edge companies, I think usually there are some frustrations where the, the agile values is not like going all the way through the company, which I still think can cause some friction you might be able to deliver uh, software and deploy very frequently and according to customer needs, but you might internally have some frictions while the agile values is not like streamlined all the way through the company. So I still think it could be valid for these companies. Mm. Mm. Well, um, uh, 
One boring question is, what is Agile? And we, we can talk about continuous delivery and so on is Agile. So that's also, that's also a point. But on the other hand, cutting edge, just because some fraction of companies is actually doing this, doesn't mm. mean that we are in a post more, more, than, more than Agile world, to be honest. And we all know, have experienced that this is not even close there, I would say. And also the human aspects on this, it's something that is impossible to control. Technology is easy, is ones and zeros. The humans, that's what messes things up. That's why we still have a job. That's why we come on Monday and realize, oh, they don't like each other anymore because something happens on the weekend. Like, what, what are you doing, guys? What happened? So yeah, I, I understand the question, sure. I like the technology, how, how much they have done for development, indeed. But I, did, I still think Adler is more than that, even if I, I are against that Adler could be everything. But it's more than that. Mm. Well, I, think it's, uh, I really like your points that uh, Agile is a lot around the, the values and they still are really valuable, <laughs> uh, especially outside of, of the software organization as well. Uh, so that's a great point. But I, I'm wondering if, if we, the companies that today are trying to become Agile or looking at Agile as their next step, are they doing themselves a disservice by just aiming for that and not aiming directly for, they're like, let's go even further. Let's aim directly at uh, you know, DevOps continuous delivery and pushing the envelope all the way uh, mm -hmm. rather than really struggling to get to a, a middle base that isn't mm -hmm. uh, that good anymore or that hard at least. That's a really good question. I love that angle. Oh, wait, I didn't think about that one. That maybe that's a question for next episode. But I, I'm not sure. I think you need to set the middle ground of kind of maybe introducing Scrum, which is disruptive towards project management. So I think you kind of have to reach the middle ground where you replace some structures and habits and then build forward. But maybe you're right. Maybe you should aim for the, ne the next step immediately. I, I... <laughs> okay. my, my next question, well, my follow-up question will then be, if Agile as we know it today, the Agile Manifesto, and then uh, started by from software and it has then spread out to like, values that we find are, are like, broadly applicable, is there a chance that will happen with the way we see software and technology working today? So continuous delivery and like being able to to uh, do like micro releases multiple times per day, does that translate into new values? And does that hold the next evolution of, of uh, business agility where uh, like normal agile applied to business isn't that interesting? I but I think the problem from the beginning is that we're not even in the first step. So like there's, you're, you're a forward thinking person. <laughs> <laughs> but I think from a business agility standpoint, we're not even at the first step. So we're still in like annual planning. We still have like HR life cycles. We still have like annual budget years. And, and also innovation think, workshops. <laughs> and innovation <laughs> workshops, exactly. So I think the problem is also that looking at that perspective, it does also affect the the daily deployments because if we're looking at software teams that actually are way ahead as you're talking about and do deploy etc cetera, etc cetera, we want these people to stay motivated and engaged to be able to have this efficiency but if we then have like reward systems etc cetera, etc cetera, that still causes a lot of friction that might be a threat to that efficiency and i still i think that's the situation <clears throat> quick vote I'm happy. All right, cool. Ah, Last topics tonight. I love this. Moving on to the next topic. Next topic is uh, Agile 2, the fix to the currently broken Agile. Uh, there's a couple of people who have kind of created this next version, next iteration of Agile. They call it Agile 2, and they state on their website that the Agile experiment was only a partial success. Agile needs to pivot. And... Um, They've listed the long text of why uh, it's broken and why it needs fixing. And then this results in six new values and 43 
new principles. Uh, each principle is, has also an attached text with further details, recommendations, and guides. Um, it's an interesting read, and I think we all was triggered by that. But uh, so I guess this is a yay or nay. Uh, is Agile 2 the fix to the currently broken Agile? <laughs> what, what do you have? <laughs> Up, upside down. <laughs> All right. So I'm starting the timer here. Who wants to shoot first? Mm, I, I think this is... Um, first, I think this is like a kicking on someone already lying there in the mud. Because of course, like what the what the fuck? <laughs> uh, but if I look at it from a broader perspective, it's like, does the world need more frameworks around the agile? Is it broken? I don't know if an, if anyone said it was the fix from the beginning. Yeah. And if people just spend more time on actually doing some value for 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 the world instead of making up random frameworks that we don't need, I think it would be better for everyone. And then this is, goes to all framework creators. Stop doing that and get a real job. For me, it's oh, it, it, there's some good stuff in there. Some great principles that kind of obvious, and some are weird, weirdly vague, and some are weirdly specific. But agile is just a tool. It's it's like saying uh, the hammer is broken, but I fixed it. I created the hammer dot two, and you can screw screws with this one. So it's it's just you've just cre invented another tool that's gonna suit in other situations or. This probably sits in their context. <laughs> I just need to say that, like, don't make that sequel movie. <laughs> we all know it doesn't work. It's <laughs> like the world doesn't need another Sharknado number two. So um, I think it's kind of uh, fun in itself. I don't know. There is something that is like fundamentally like wrong in itself to like claim that Agile is broken yep. and then deliver 43 new principles to that. That kind of feels like, yeah. Uh, mm. If this was framed, sorry, Anders, if this was framed differently, let's say uh, in our context, in our business, we have discussed a big group and, and we settled and agreed upon a bunch of principles that make sense for us. And we documented them. That makes sense. But mm. doing that and then proclaiming that we've now figured out the, the solution to the problem and it's generic for everyone. That's weird to me. Yeah. Mm. Would... And also adding complexity. Yeah. Under so reading through it, I, I think there was a lot of good points they made and many of the principles seem pretty useful and had good points, but it's, I, I think the, the part that was hard for me was the values where they're trying to summarize it all and they're not making any statements really. They're just saying that everything's valuable the thing this and this which mm. is not really giving you any direction right. I, guess, I guess the statement is that it's broken and they have the fix but uh, and I, of course statement. of of course they need to have thought about this how how bold are we going to be what what's the are we creating any bus are we going to do this yeah. it's more like why did you start in, in the beginning that's what i want to understand like because uh, we, human doesn't like complex tools and systems. That's why yes. we always fall back to the easy one because it's too hard. And you can, if you need to do like five years at KTH to learn this stuff, it's too complicated to bring to the masses anyway. Keep it simple, stupid yes. simple. It's too I'm, hard. I'm, I'm totally onto that track. Yeah, but from a system thinking perspective, like trying to solve complex issues with an even more complex framework, that's just stupid. We all know that. So it, it doesn't work and we can't handle that much data. We're not able to like put all of these situations together. And as you said, Anders, there are also no straight answers in this. So it's just adding complexity by saying that this is right and this is also right. So we're just building more complexity uh, with Agile 2. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we're... Du -du 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 -du. I'm more, 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 more. Uh, no, okay, you're, you're, yeah, go to your vote. 50 50. Uh, my topic, I decide. <laughs> oh, new rules. <laughs> yeah. No, we had an even oh, okay. had an entire last episode. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, sorry. Okay, okay, sure, you whatever. 
Uh, no, let's, let's, we deliver. Uh, let's wrap it up then. Uh, viewers, uh, have a read, make your own opinion. Uh, interesting fun read, a couple of great, great statements and opinions being written down here, but yeah, let's see where, if anyone talks about Agile 2.0 in a year. Next topic and the final one for this, this episode. Yes, so uh, I wanted to continue to talk about something that we touched upon, uh, I think, last time. So we started to talk about where uh, Agile had made the most impact outside of software development. And we talked about different areas. And one of the areas that we mentioned that I mentioned that I experienced to be a bit problematic was when we're talking about agility within sales, within sales team and how to work agile within sales and how to get sales uh, into the rest of the organization when you're starting to work fully agile. So this is not like a J or nay questions, but rather a discussion question. And my question is sales and agile, what's the problem? Yeah, what is the problem? Uh, who has most experience of working with, with sales people? I have some you have. experience. Leila, start. Yeah, uh, yeah I, can, um, I can take a bit about my background in this. So I, I come from the perspective of business agility, trying to get everybody on board, trying to get this holistic perspective, trying to break down silos, most importantly, to be able to deliver even more value to the customers. And one of those things usually come to like... Um, integrating sales team with dev team, often because uh, sales teams has valuable information about what the customer wants and needs. And dev team is going to develop like functionality and value to that person. Uh, sometimes when the customer and the user are the same person, that could be the case also not. But anywho, um, I think from a culture standpoint that uh, there is a culture heritage within sales teams that are really, really far from the values within uh, Agile. Yeah. So it's usually pretty individualistic. Uh, and I think that comes from the comp structure mostly that you often get incentives on an individual basis. Sometimes you have it on team basis, but very often on an individual basis. Yeah. Uh, and then there are more things that just have grown into this culture, uh, which I've seen as one of the problems of making this smoothly, breaking down that silo. On that note, I think maybe maybe sales or sales people have to do the same journey as engineers did. So way back 10 years ago, we were all engineers pissed off that the, the management above didn't get agile. Surprise, you're managers now. And now you're doing it and you're trying to figure out how, to, how do we help and empower teams and so on. Maybe they have to do the same transition. And uh, currently, if I'm starting a new company or want to hire head of sales, I'm going to look for an expert. And that's usually an achiever with a different cultural background. But give it five or 10 years, um, may maybe they have to do the same journey. Um, yeah. So I think it's partially what you're saying. Like it's a, a somewhat cultural problem and, and uh, the, the work culture in, in sales team are... At least stereotypically, it's slightly different. But I, I think it's also a, like inherent in the thing they produce. Like they, their work leads up to a contract, and that contract is often fixed in in scope and price. And the the purpose of the contract is to to set things in stone. And and that's kind of contrarian to mm. what yeah. other ways of working are trying to achieve. So I think when it works is uh, when you have sales teams or sales processes that leads up to a, a partnership yeah. uh, and, and you have two companies that say like there's something uh, like a big value here for both of us and we agree on the direction and we partner up uh, and then the same people tend to have a really good way of working uh, and it leads to a, a really constructive dialogue that includes the whole company in, mm. in building towards this partnership which I think makes me think that it's not a fundamental problem with the people. It's not a fundamental problem with their culture. It's a, a byproduct of, of the thing they often work towards, which is uh, like fixed sales contracts and yeah, setting up yeah. that structure. Mm. Mm. I, I, I'm actually involved in creating a new sales structure. So I'm we are yeah. trying to, to, to actually do that, which is pretty interesting. 
some things we are talking about is that uh, what type of personality are we looking for? Uh, more people that we can train sales, uh, the seller models, for example, that we're yeah. doing. Uh, yes. That, of course, is one big, uh, big uh, important thing that also how, how we how we doing that and also how, how we work as a team, for example, we, we 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 try to make sure that salespeople actually do the demos, for example, the engineering demos. Uh, yeah. So they need to learn the tools and product and so on. So it, it's it's more involvement because I, I haven't worked that much with sales, so I shouldn't talk too much about what they're doing. But one thing could be like if you're working a team or a group, for example, if, that's a big difference. Uh, or if you like have responsibility of the, you know, do you eat your own dog food? Mm. So if, for example, engineers have learned that we need to handle the support also. So we need mm. to do it good. Yeah. So the same mm. could be like, for example, sales, if you sell it and you're not selling right, you need to take care of the, the shit down the line. So if you think about that and involve everyone more, you actually, I think you think about all the consequences you have. Because you, you know about that dilemma. We have all heard those situations where like, oh, you oversold our product. We won't be able to deliver on that. Mm -hmm. And then you have that typical silo in between the sales team and the dev team uh, where, where like the product owner says, that's not what we have prioritized for the closest future. And then the sales team come and just, but can't we just push this in? Mm -hmm. uh, so I think uh, that silo is the one that you want to break free of. Um, I, I have even worse examples, but I think those are the most typical conflicts and frustrations that we see. Uh, but I've also heard about, you know, the opposite situation where salespeople doesn't want to like um, cooperate closely with dev people or put them in front of the customer. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so three against one. Uh, I'm curious. Yeah, you have a follow-up question. So what's what's the learning so far? So you're currently trying to improve on this or working mm -hmm. with this? Or... I mean, the learning is that um, every, everyone can be a salesperson, uh, to be honest. Uh, it's still hard. And uh, there are some tools and techniques that we realize that someone that have done this before uh, understand how you mostly like how you analyze and calculate and understand when you should drop a lead that is not hot anymore. How much, you know, those kind of things. But yeah, we want to have the mentality right and then come in with someone that can help us with that. But start with the like people that we really want to be, they can do a lot of different things, help out with onboarding, customer journey, and you need to have broader re responsibility. So you, you understand that you need to take care of the customer later also. Yeah. It's a full stack salesperson. Oh, mm. Someone to follow up questions. When, so you're, are you looking and recruiting for new people to these roles? Yes. Uh, I, that, I had an interview before this one for that and I have one tomorrow. So it's, it's a difficult role, but it's, it's interesting. Can you say anything about the reactions you get when you explain the, this, this new way of working? Or So far, good, because this is not salespeople I'm talking with. Mm, this is people with thing. different mm. skill set. They, they are comfortable with talking with the customers and those kind of things and understand source product and onboarding and can explain mm. difficult concept easy. Mm. Then, we, then they, oh, you're talking about sales. Yeah, but the, then I start to explain what they're supposed to do, really. And then they, they get mm. triggered. Hopefully, mm. enough. But it. maybe that's the thing. Maybe we're creating a new kind of sales profile for for the future. Uh, yeah, that tomato is so distracting. It is right. <laughs> I'm done. All right, <laughs> that's a good. good I thoughts. love. Yeah. Yeah. Good final line. Good final line. <laughs> Thank you all. All right, uh, so we're closing in on the wrap-up. But as usual, let's summarize uh, key takeaways. What's uh, currently buzzing through your mind? Um, Desh. Um, I think I'm still back at my topic where I want to talk more about the technical capabilities and what they mean for us rather than talking about Agile. <laughs> And of course, the technical capabilities has implications on ways of working and values and other things. Yeah. So I think that's that's what's buzzing right now. Yeah. Yes. Um, 
Uh, first of all, I think I was a little bit uh, mentally tired during this meeting, but I think this probably was the best energy of this discussion. Hopefully, the viewers think the same. Uh, going on in my head, I, I still have this sales thing fresh because I'm also working with it. So it's pop up a lot of ideas at how we actually can change it. And uh, I think change is coming there also, to be honest. Uh, so that's interesting. So over to you, Leila. Yeah, I think what's buzzing in my head is also um, the new sales profile of the future. Uh, because that was something that I get a bit uh, eager to start exploring. Jimmy? I'm, I'm curious if any of the authors of Agile 2 will contact <laughs> us. Uh, <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I'm probably going to grab a coffee or lunch with you, Jagger, to hear more about the work you're doing regarding sales. All right. Uh, this was a blast as usual. Uh, thank you, Leila, Anders, and Jagge. And thanks to all of you who stayed around this long and listened to our discussions and rants and opinions and whatnot. <laughs> Goodbye. Uh, <laughs> Bye. Ciao. Bye-bye. Coming up with fun and interesting topics can sometimes be a true challenge for us. So we warmly invite you to help us. If you have a suggestion for a topic or an article you would like us to cover, discuss and debate here on Lean Coffee, please leave a comment below or reach out to me on LinkedIn and I will send you a copy of my book, Visualization Examples. In the previous Lean Coffee episode, we discussed agile and sustainability, certifications and much more. And click here to listen to Henrik Nyberg talk about test automation in Minecraft using Minecraft. I can really recommend it. Explore, have fun, be safe.